Let's do it. All right. What's good, y'all? It's your girl, DJ Nia Boom, and you are tuned into the Boom Sessions. And I have a special guest with me tonight. Oh, I think I'm going to say this wrong. Lord you. Perfect. Yeah, I got it right. I, I'm on a roll today. Um, so, all right. Uh, thank you so much, you know, for joining us, joining me today. Uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how you got started in, in the industry, in music. Yeah, um, my name's Lord Jew. I'm from Boston, born and raised. Um, I was always playing music. I was always doing music, reading and writing, playing instruments. My grandfather taught me how to play the violin and I taught myself how to play the piano when I was younger. I was in the choir. Um, I was a big fan of hip hop. My dad was a DJ, played music and rap all the time in the house. I would always write raps, um, write my favorite rappers, write raps down and rap them to myself. When I got a little older, um, I used to just play around with the boys outside, like freestyle battle rap and just playing around with each other. Then everybody just pretty much encouraged me to get in the booth. Um, I recorded my first song when I was about 17, kind of hated it. Just, I wasn't really comfortable with my voice. I kind of hated how my voice sounded. So I left it alone. I would always still, you know, write my raps and, you know, do whatever I do on my, my own time. But then I had to revisit it again. And, um, cause again, everybody was on my back, like, yo, you should do it. You, you got the look, you got the sound, you got everything. You should just do it. So I just got back in it and then. I actually stuck with it even through that stage again where I felt like I didn't like how I sounded. I had to stick with it and just get comfortable with it. And when I got comfortable, I actually learned to love it. So that's where I'm at now. All right. Um, dope. How how would you describe your sound? Um, I don't know, kind of like hoodish. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, would you compare it to uh, another artist? Um, not really, just because I have a different sound or a different flow, different tone on a couple of different songs. So it's like, it's not really one sound that you could pinpoint to a different, another artist. Right, right. Um, all right, what, what do you feel sets you apart from other artists? Um, I just don't have like a, a solidified, um, not I don't want to say sound, but like you know how, like someone like the baby, you could tell who it is because right. he kind of like the same. I don't have like a solidified like flow, I guess. Got it. Uh, All right, the cadence and everything. Yeah, is different depending on like as the beat the and guy. exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Speaking of that, um, how do you usually, well, you know, what's your creative process as far as your production's concerned? Do you work with like the same producers, um, or you know, what do you kind of, do you go for the same sound or how do you, how do you work um, creatively? Um, I just let my, my brain and my feelings and my emotions just take over, you know, my imagination just take over. I kind of try not to stick into one box. You know, people always, when producers hit me up, they're like, oh, what type of sound are you looking for? I just be like, send me whatever you like, you know what I'm saying? And if I could catch a vibe on it, then I'll catch a vibe on it. So, um, yeah, my, that's how my creative process is like I'm, I'll either sit in my room or in the car and listen to a couple beats and you know catch a vibe and write to it or I'll cook up in the studio with the actual producer and go in right there and freestyle right there so it just depends lately that's what I've been doing though is just in the studio with the actual producer and just creating like that that's that's been like the best work to me so far of my own yeah when I'm, yeah I guess they got like make for more of an organic um right exactly uh yeah um result uh all mm -hmm. right so who are some of your favorite rappers um right. jay-z okay. cameron jd kiss Nicki minaj missy elliott i'm little wayne j cole you know Okay. All right. That's a nice variety. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, that's a nice. Yeah. Could you imagine like doing a collab with each of them, like on one, you know, album? That would be crazy. I don't even know if I'll be able to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. So, what? Um. Oh, look, I lost my train of thought. I'm <laughs> thinking about that. Uh. So, as far as uh, 
the pandemic. I like to talk to yeah. everybody that I've been doing interviews with lately. You know, how has it affected? Oh my goodness, how has it affected you? And you know, your creative process uh, and and how you go about um, doing things. Hold on, one. Um, I'm sorry. Say the question one more time. Okay. okay. So, um, you know, the the pandemic. How has it affected you? And you know, affected the way you work, and uh, you know how you see the industry and your future. Well, in the beginning, it was kind of like a bummer because I felt like I was kind of on a roll. Like I was getting, I was getting shows. I was, you know, kind of taking over the East Coast. I felt like, and then boom, it hit. I was, I was supposed to open for Fab. I had just wow. opened for the baby. I was supposed to open for Fab, and then I had a show in DC, like all in the same week. And that was the same week. That same weekend, the whole the country got shut down. So it was like, damn, like, fuck. So it was a little setback, but then, you know, a minor setback, a great, you know, a greater outcome came out of it. I felt like, you know, I, I tapped in with a lot of different people. I was able to, you know, get creative in my own way and somehow reach different people and, you know, I just come back, you know, a little harder. Like, I don't know, like, it just felt like, it was meant to happen, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, I wasn't supposed to open for Fab. Like, everything was supposed to go the way that it's going now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One artist, uh, other uh, artist I interviewed today, he had a song called Perfect Timing. And I was just mm-hmm. like, even though we don't, like, always agree, everything mm-hmm. is perfect timing. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, um, let's talk about Fuck That, Yo. Tell us mm-hmm. about this and what what's the you know, thought process behind this joint? Um, there wasn't no thought. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, yeah, it was, um, it was how I told you I created the, the, the producer made the beat in the studio. I believe it was like five, five, three, four, four a.m., five in the morning. That's why I screamed in the beginning. It's five o'clock. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I was like frustrated because at that time there was it was just a new group of people that I was recording with and we all get along cool we're great but like I'm always the only girl there and they feel like they can always tell me what to do Mm. so kind of in that song was kind of me dissing them and then at the same time um I got a a little bit of inspiration from um forgot who sings the song but Michael Jackson's on the hook um I always feel like somebody's watching. I forgot. I always forget because I always think it's Michael Jackson. Yes, yeah, some, um, um, somebody. Yeah, but um, his song. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> I forgot why I was listening to it or when I was listening to it, but for some reason that was that that beat made me think of that song or reminded me of me listening to that song. So that's how I came up with the concept. So I was dissing them and come up and put together a concept like people are always watching me and stalking me and shit like that so boom I didn't write shit down I think I, no I wrote the second verse but everything else was just off the top every four bars every couple bars punched in you know it was five okay. five in the morning yeah do you usually like um write write your stuff ahead of time or is it like you go in and you hear it and you know yeah, it just depends. Honestly, there's there's songs that I have I wrote the whole thing front to front to back, and then there's songs that I have that I I, I freestyle the hook and then I write the verses and this you know what I'm saying it just depends on what what, what I'm doing and what type of vibe I'm in. Right. All right. Um. So I have some fun questions, but before we get to that, what is uh or who would be your dream collab? Um. I feel like that changes all the time. I, I have a lot of inspirations. You know what I mean? Um, I'd love to work with J. Cole. Everybody that I said is that was in my top. Right, that's you know, what I'm about to say. You gotta answer this. You know, so like Nikki definitely, but I wanna I wanna sit and actually create. Like I don't wanna have a song and then have a verse or they have a song and have a verse and they send it to me, you know what I'm saying? Like those are cool, but I feel like when you create with people, like right. it just comes out like it, ha- it has to be a hit because you both like it. You both, you know, are putting in your thoughts and things like that. Like someone like Drake or something like that or Rihanna or, you know, many of those cool people that I feel like take the time to, you know, make good music, you know, make music that makes them feel good and make someone else feel good. Right. 
All right. Uh, so, all right. So I just want you to finish the sentence. Mm-hmm. I hate it when. um um, i hate it when niggas tell me what to do man (laughs) that's that's just makes me mad is it just like niggas or is it you know i'm saying people overall or is it like different when it comes from a man it's definitely people overall but it's definitely more triggering when it comes from a man especially when like he doesn't know what he's talking about like I feel like guys just feel like they want to tell you what to do just to feel like they're in charge or they know better but it's like right. you're not you're wrong right now you're completely right. wrong yeah so yeah like they know it all yeah right you, you don't we know more than you um so uh all right so the next question is I love a man well, the f- I love a man or woman who uh who cares about me and supports me and yeah, who cares yeah. and supports so, Yeah. Yeah, that's that's big. Even though yeah. it's it may seem, you know, I, I it sounds it's, like it yeah. sounds like, you know, but, cliche or or bro, or or you know, general, but it's like you you rarely find people that genuinely right. truly support what you what makes you happy, you know what I mean? So when you find somebody like that, it's hard if it doesn't work out or you have to, you know, if, or if you have to let them go or they, they just make you upset. It's just like, damn, like you don't always find that somewhere, right. you know? Yeah. That shit sucks. Um, yeah. We need more of that. We definitely need definitely. more of that. Um, all right. So do you have, are you working on an EP? Is this a part of a, a collective thing that you're doing or what, what are we going to see in the future? What are we, what are uh, I just dropped the e- my second EP called Boss Talk Volume 2. So okay. oh, Boss Talk Volume a- 1 okay. and Volume 2. Yep, they're both out on all streaming platforms everywhere. Um, you can, you know, listen to that anywhere. Um, fuck that, you'll just drop the video. Um, I'm probably going to drop one more video off this and have another EP ready to go top of the year, maybe like February. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm obviously drop some freestyles in between because that's just what I do. But all right, so what's your favorite part of being an artist and what's your least favorite part? Um, my favorite part is what is my favorite part? Like, do I even like doing this? No, sir. <laughs> um, these are the questions, these are the hard questions. <laughs> I guess it's like, you know, like kind of like surprising myself like seeing how like, like wow, I created this. Like, it's kind of like a baby, mm-hmm. like, oh wow, like I did this, like wow I'm proud of myself you know what I mean like I, I did something yeah and that that actually other people are inspired by and like like I started um I don't want to go off track but just real quick I started um like my my presence on social media as like a fitness and health influencer you know like very pro- pro-black very you know outspoken in, in those topics and um that's where a lot of people follow me and they're inspired by me and when p- random people hit me up or see me outside and they just tell me stories about how I you know motivated them or influenced their life it just made me feel good about myself so I I felt like if I could turn that get that results from my music which I kind of do sometimes but it's still more more so health and fitness um, good that I did something you know right no nah, that's, that's then, hot, man that's, yeah that's dope see people i don't okay. know if they would even know that about you would they be able to find that out <laughs> like i mean uh, people i mean uh, i talk a lot of shit you know on social media good and bad so if you if people when people tap in and they actually follow me they know you know my personality and how i am so they would know that all right um, speaking of that uh oh go ahead oh and then the least favorite thing um i don't know why but there's just days that I'm just over it and I'm just, you know, I get like completely discouraged, not, 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 not by anything specific, but, um, people will just, I don't know. I just, I'll just not want to do it anymore, but good thing. I have people around me that like, nah, you got to do this, like like get back in it. Like sometimes the industry is just like, you know, it's, it definitely probably is that like, it just seems so corny and fake, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, all the talented people get overlooked all the you know the wannabe people get praised sometimes you know and this and and there actually is good people out there and there actually is talented people out there but I feel like I don't know there's it's just a 
a fad now, you know, to be a musician. It's like, did you guys actually really like doing this? Are you guys actually working on your craft? Are you guys actually really, you know, creating something for so that kind of it shouldn't discourage me but it's just like it's kind of like you look at it in disgust in a weird like in a weird way like yeah. like I'm part of this you know what I'm saying like when you're part of something and it has that little negative energy or negative connotation it's like I don't know it makes me just feel weird but I I get over it. I just have to talk to certain people about it and then I'm back on my bullshit that's dope at least you have people you know what I'm saying you could talk to Right. Um, you know, they get you back, but that's, um, that's insightful. Um, so yeah. So, um, all right. So is there anything else that you want to tell the people about, or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let the people know about that we haven't got a chance to talk about. I mean, I just hope that, you know, people just follow their dreams and believe in themselves because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. If you don't push for your dreams, no one else is going to do it for you. You know what I'm saying? Like just stay on point try to do something i feel like <laughs> when people want to know about me they can find out about me i'm not an open book but i'm pretty you know like i said i'm active i talk my shit i say what i gotta say so i just if people won't follow and blah blah blah, blah or we could chop it up then that's that i like when people find out more about, about me through face. me than actually you know like about questions face. and things like that i don't mind you know questions and interviews and things like that but when people know about me, oh, I've been following you a while, girl, Juju, I know you, then that makes me feel like they're paying attention, you know what I'm saying? They actually, they actually care, you know what I mean? Right, right. right. All right. Um, speaking of that, tell the people where they can follow you at. Um, it's Lord Ju. Um, it's Lord Ju on Instagram, I-T-S-L-O-R-D-J-U. Um, Plant Bay Ju on Twitter, P-L-A-N-T-B-A-E-J-U. J-U. And, um, Lord Ju, L O R D J U, on all streaming platforms. All right. Well, thank you, um, Lord Ju. I'm gonna call you Juju, but I'm, <laughs> I'm following you. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta earn that. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for kicking it with me. Today. Thank you. And sharing your goodness. Oh. You're welcome. And anytime you got anything, you know, send it to me, DJ Nia Boom at Gmail, or I'll give it to Mac, mm -hmm. and um, I'll definitely continue to support you. And word, let's go. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, no doubt. Um, all right, take care. You too. Enjoy Bye. your meal, girl. Thank you, girl. You know my mouth. All right, <laughs> right y'all. It's your girl Nia Boom, Lord Ju, and we out. Catch y'all later. Ju